The Drought Feed Cat Guide is a free phone app. It's an app that you download on your file on your phone. You don't need access to the web once it's on your phone. It's a standalone product. It, it's downloadable on both Apple and Android devices. You just need to put in a search, Drought Feed Calculator, into either Google Play or iTunes or app, um, apps iTunes icon on your phone. And you should be able to download that quite easily and for free. So why would we use the drought feed calculator? Well, it's a simple tool that you can use in the paddock or, you know, driving around in the ute. And it can help you answer a number of questions. And we're just going to work through a quick example. So what's a cheaper feed? We've got a 1,000 late pregnant ewes that we want to feed. If we can get some silage, let's say it's winter cereal in the boot stage and it's worth $150. Or we can get barley at $350. Which one's a cheaper feed source? And how much will we actually need of each of those feed sources? So, the drought feed calculator has basically five screens to it, or five pages. If we look down the bottom here, we've got feed one, which is in black, so we're on the feed one screen. We've got a second feed we can select from, and a third feed. We can also make a mix up of those three feeds and then we can select the livestock that we want to feed and it'll tell us how much we need to feed. So we're on feed one screen and I'm going to go up and I'm going to click on touch to assess feed value. So as part of the, the app there's a database of many different feeds and in this case it starts with grains, so I'm going to select barley. So I clicked on barley and it comes up with the average energy and crude protein content of, of barley grain. Now, that comes from testing that's been done over many years and, and it's only an average. But the average energy and protein content varies with cereal grains and all other feed sources. So we recommend that that you do a feed test to actually work out what the energy and protein content is. Now if you did have a feed test you can override the amount of energy or protein or the dry matter uh, if you would like just by clicking on those cells and typing in the, the appropriate number. I'm, gonna, I'm happy with those figures and I'm just going to whack in a price on farm, on farm cost of $350. So that we can see now that for every tonne of barley that comes through the gate, we're going to get 11,250 megajoules of energy. And each megajoule of energy is going to cost a bit over three cents. And the cost dollars per kilogram of protein is $3.54. And then the cost dollars per tonne of dry matter is $388. It's important to be able to look at the, the, the energy and protein contents of the feed because that's how we can compare feeds. So I've got our barley done. I'm going to go down now and click on feed two. And I'll go at the top of the page, touch to assess feed value. I scroll down through the um, easy to use database and I'm going to find winter cereal boot silage. And I'm going to click on it. Straight away it comes up with a warning. This feed has greater variation in energy and protein levels compared with other feeds. A feed test is strongly recommended. Hays and silages depend, their energy and protein content depends greatly on when they've been cut and how well they've been made. So it really is highly recommended to get those feed tests tested. In this case, it, it comes up an average energy and protein content and a dry matter content. I've had the feed tested, so I've whacked in its price of $150. I'm happy with the dry matter content of the diet, but I changed the, the megajoules of energy down to 9. It's a little bit lower than what the database said, which was 10. And so we can see for every tonne of um, silage we get, that comes through the gate, we only get 4,320 megajoules because 
only 48% or 480 kilograms of that tonne of silage is actually dry matter. The rest of it's water. It's, each megajoule we get is actually going to be 3.47 cents per megajoule. So it's slightly more expensive than the megajoules for the barley. But the protein, I think, is a little bit cheaper. And the cost per tonne dry matter is, is uh, um, also cheaper. So if we just have a look at what barley was, it was 3.1 cents a megajoule, 3.454 for protein, so it was a more expensive protein source, and the cost of tonne dry matter was, was actually a little bit more expensive. The next thing that we can do down the bottom of the page is we can click on mix, and we can select a feed made up of a mixture of those two feeds that we've entered. If I had entered a third feed, we could make up a mix of all three feeds if we wanted to. So click here and create a mix. So already barley and winter cereal boots silage has, has populated the screen and it automatically spits, splits it up into 50-50. If, it, if, if there were three feeds there, it would automatically split it up into thirds. But you can overwrite those percentages and make them whatever percentages that you want to make them. In this case, we'll just go with the 50-50 mix. Now that is as a an ad, as fed, so it's just how you would weigh it, um, you know, on farm, and it's how it comes. So in this case, if we fed a diet which was by weight 50-50 split, the average energy of the overall diet would be 11 megajoules of energy. It would have 11.7% protein and the cost per megajoule would be 3.21 cents and the cost per kilogram of protein would be $3 and the cost per ton dry matter as fed would be 249 So we've got our feeds in there. We've also made up a mix if we want to use that. We now go and select our livestock. So we click livestock down the bottom. Again, we go to the top of the page, touch to develop a drought ration. And you will see that with cattle, we've got dry cow we can select from, a cow that's six months pregnant, eight months pregnant, or a cow with calf at foot, or we can select weaned animals where we want to achieve either 100, 250, or 500 grams a day weight gain. Now, they're only moderate weight gain targets, but they're just to keep growing animals going forward. And in, in, in drought, it's most likely re uh, female replacements often. We also have the same scenario with sheep. A dry ewe and weather, last month of pregnancy, first month of lactation, second and third month of lactation, 50, 100, 150 grams a day lamb weight growth. Now, at the start of this, I asked a question about um, last month of pregnancy, so I'm going to click on that animal, and it comes to our, our livestock page. So I need to enter the livestock weight of the animal, which they're 60 kilos, and you can see we're going to be feeding them feed one. I've entered that we're going to feed for 30 days, and that there's a thousand of them. So it tells us we're going to need to feed a, nearly 1.2 kilograms of barley per head per day. It's going to cost us 42 cents per head per day, or $12.50 for the 30 days. We'll need about 36 tonnes of barley for that period, and it's going to cost us $12,552. We'll go up now and we'll have a look and see how much we're going to have to feed for the silage. So I click on feed one tab and drops it down. I can select feed two or the mix. I'm going to select feed two. It's now telling us that we'll have to feed 3.36 kilograms as fed. Remember, a lot of it's water, so that's why there's that big volume as fed. It's how we weigh it on farm. It's going to cost us 50 cents per head per day, or $15 for the period. We're going to actually need at least 100 tonne of it in the bunker or uh, in our uh, bales, whichever way it comes, and it's going to cost us $15,000 to do it. Let's also now have a look at the, the mix because um, using last month of pregnancy, 
they need to be starting to be fed some roughage to help stimulate the, the milk production. So if we were to feed barley only, um, we wouldn't have any real roughage. If we were to feed um, silage only, well, it might cost us a bit more than if we fed barley. So how about we have that mix, have a look at the mix. So I've clicked on mix. We'll now need to feed 1.77 kilograms of the total ration as fed. It'll cost us 44 cents per head per day or $13.29 for the, for the month. We're going to need 26 tonnes of barley and we're going to need 26 tonnes of silage because it's 50-50% as fed and it's going to cost us $13,289. So in summary, if we were going to feed barley by itself, we'd have to feed 1.2 kilos, silage 3.3 and a mix 50-50 of 1.77. It would cost 42 cents a head per day for barley, 50 cents for silage, and 44 cents for a mix of the two. So that equates to about $12.50, $15, and $13.30 uh, for the 30 day period. We would need 36 tonnes of barley, or 100 tonnes of silage, or 26 tonnes of each for a cost of twelve and a half thousand, fifteen thousand one hundred or thirteen thousand approximately three hundred. So the tool is a very quick and simple way of working out the cost benefit of different feeds and how much you're likely to need um, for the chosen period that you want to feed and how much you will need to feed on a daily basis. Like I said we really encourage feed testing because feeds vary in their quality and if you don't know the quality of the feed you're likely to either be underfeeding the animals or overfeeding. So for the cost of a feed test you can really improve your feeding efficiency by um, entering the actual energy and protein contents of the feed. One other thing that um, the app has in the top right hand corner it's got a bit of a question mark and that question mark is to signify well if you press it it might answer a question that you have. Firstly there's information which uh, as you'll see the heading must read there's information there about feed testing and there's a phone number there and also a website if you're looking to get feed testing done. It talks about different warnings like chemical residues it's important that everyone's aware of the risk of residues and preventing that risk so if you're grazing Failed crops, what have they been sprayed with? If you're buying feeds, you know, what, have, what were they, have they been sprayed with any uh, chemicals and is there any residue risk? There's also different warnings that appear as you use the uh, app and, and it's important to take heed of those warnings. The other thing that it, it also mentions and thanks, it, it, it explains how to use it, but each screen is pretty, the instructions are on each of those pages that I went through, but more importantly, it acknowledges work that's been done by New South Wales DPI for many years that's really come together to, to um, make the app useful as it is today. So it lists a range of people there, and I'm not going to go through them, but it's really important to acknowledge the work that's been done in this area for many years uh, by a number of people. So just to finish up though, well it's we get really wound up in the day-to-day -day activities of, of what we've got to do on farm to um, make sure that you know we're making you know the right decisions and ensuring the best by our livestock and about uh, other things that we do on the farm. It's really important to look after yourself, to look after your family, and, and to look after your friends. And and um, if you can do that. Um, that will be will make you the happiest that you can be basically